Well, hello, Bob Dendry here, and welcome back to City Skyline. So today we are once again in the town of Lorikeet Valley. So last week we did a bit of detailing work on, you know, Mel uh, Belmont Maintenance Facility, I should call it. Um, I also added in uh, sort of a few bits after I finished recording the episode as well, as you might notice. Um, but today we're going to be taking a break from our rail line and we're going to be doing a bit more sort of development. Um, we've got large demands for residential and also commercial. So it seems like a good time to, to start doing that. But there are some small changes we're going to need to make to our rail line, I think, to, to make it look really cool and exactly what we're after. Uh, one of which is we're actually going to take our uh, what will be our freight line here and we're actually going to bury it partially and the reason for that is that um, we're going to build a suburb on this side of uh, Birdsong Station we've got some reasonably flat land so it makes sense that people would probably want to be live uh, be living here it's quite close to public transport as well so we're gonna get started straight away um, by lowering down our line and we're just going to lower it first. We're going to transition to being a um, um, like lowered, uh, sorry, a tunneled section shortly. But I just want to make sure we've got the right heights first. <laughs> and our um, oh hello, hello there. It's quite cool that it's actually all like rendered and stuff, or well, well at least partially rendered underneath. Um, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to switch this over to being a tunnel. And we're just going to sort of take it around probably just to about here or so. Um, that didn't work out at all how I wanted it to work. Um, I think part of the problem was I did that lowering when I should have not done that. In any case, we're going to fix it up. I think what we're going to do, we're going to use the our favourite network multi-tool to um, let's make sure we've got sort of smooth descent there, or a smoother descent anyway. Okay, um, so a couple of things we're going to need to do is fix up all that lowering that we did that actually didn't really make all that much sense. Uh, using the correct tool. And we're going to do a little bit of terraforming on this area. It's it's still reasonably flat, so we're not actually doing all that much. Um, but yeah, we're just uh, adjusting it a little bit. And I mean, you'd expect that to, to be happening in the new development anyway, really. Um, and Finally, this tunnel part probably isn't going quite far enough tunneled, so we will just extend it by uh, sort of one further section there. And once again, we're just going to have to do some slight correction of, uh, of what the line looks like as well. Okay, so that should be fine there. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to build a, just a nice, simple, um, just a two unit road right up against our uh, train station here. Uh, we can probably move that a little bit closer as well, I think. But we'll just do some slight corrections. Okay, that looks quite nice. Uh, 
And we don't want that bridge piece there. <laughs> Tiny bit of prettying up. In fact, we probably don't need that node there at all. Okay. Oops. Now I'm assuming. Um, it looks like pedestrians or, or um, commuters will be able to use this exit. Right, this guy's coming out. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so that's good. Um, I was actually considering how we'd uh, work that out and only sort of just when I was starting to record the episode worked out, oh, maybe we could just uh, bury our freight line. Okay, so now we're just going to have a think about how we want to um, sort of structure and really make this um, this sort of suburb work. So I'm going to lay down a bit of a suburb here first of all. Just a nice sort of smallish um, sort of area. Um, this train station is going to be quite loud. We'll just confirm that with our um, sound. That's the one. Yeah, so it's going to be quite loud. As you can see, Birdsong, it is hitting a couple of houses, but it's not too bad. So we probably want to keep um, uses that don't really mind that loudness right here near the station. And probably the most sensible usage to have there would be some commercial. And we are going to be using this as low density. This isn't going to be high density here. We're sort of back back um, out in the burbs from where we were and where we built the beginnings of our downtown. And I think we're going to have a, a nice, like, fairly um, concentrated sort of uh, node of commercial here. I also need to lay down some water as well. And it makes sense for us at this point to be just running this around past our maintenance facility. And we're just going to loop it at the moment. And we will have uh, full power coverage there, no issues. So next we're going to lay down a bit of grid. Now, while this is um, still suburban, this is, would be a, sort of a bit of a newer development. So we'll have a tighter grid pattern, I think, compared to you know what we've got over in sort of Belmont and Birdsong. So it's a, a, a different sort of design community there. But we do still want to have plenty of opportunity to have stuff like um, sort of large parks and things like that for the residents to use. Um, and I think we're going to reserve this area here for adding some park assets in. Uh, we also need to have a second sort of entry slash exit area. Um, obviously, if this road, if there were to be an accident on this intersection or something like that, um, you would have no way to get out of this development pretty much in, in your car. And, um, you know, a place I used to live, um, a fairly new development area here in Sydney, was like that for like months and months after they closed like an old access route. And it caused absolute havoc, like during peak hours, mm -mm, you're not getting out of there. <laughs> it was like, we were maybe a few hundred meters from uh, the sort of main entrance to, to the estate onto a main road and in peak hour that would take you up to half an hour to to get that couple of hundred meters so we're not going to be making that mistake here i just want to not that much yes we're going to build a bridge between these two peaks 
that will make all the sense in the world. I'm just gonna... In fact, what we can do, I don't know why I didn't just do this to start with, we can just build a raised, well, hello, just build a raised road and uh, <laughs> fix it based on that. How high does it need to be? Probably about five meters, six meters. Should be fine, right? Apparently not. Eight meters. I'm, I'm doing eight meters, I don't care. You could, I mean, you could obviously fit that at like seven, six meters. We're gonna do six meters. Don't, what, whatever you do, don't at me. Okay, maybe we should do seven. I think that's fine there. Um, so we'll just fix the height of this one. And then what we'll do is we'll take this. Use our curved road tool. Or a freeform road tool, actually. To sort of reconnect that up to our existing network we're establishing here. And for the other side, we're just gonna have a nice sort of neat uh, descent. Back to this sort of intersection here on what is a sort of a pseudo main road. So that's probably decent. Um, plenty of clearance, really, like quite a lot of clearance there. That's probably fine. In all honesty, you would probably have the uh, uh, katanery, well, you might at least have the just the actual sort of wire, I don't know what to call them, wire holder things attaching to this bridge directly rather than having overheads, but it is what it is. So now we've got uh, these two exits rather than it being a, a massive cul-de-sac. What we're going to do is turn on our snaps again. I'm just going to sort of add on uh, another sort of access route, uh, just sort of an alternate access so you don't have to be running straight past the station. And then we're going to lay down just a, a big node of residential. And while that's developing, we're also going to quickly lay down some water pipes. Which is more or less under the road. Okay, and for services, how do we look here? Um, we've got like no fire protection here at all. <laughs> so definitely we're going to get down a fire station. Um, we can maybe even just sort of slot that in uh, near our maintenance facility. In fact, it probably would make more sense for it to be in this sort of area rather than... Well, I suppose, no, you get them in, in suburbs all the time, but I just think it'll be a, a bit neater having it there. In terms of health... Yeah, health looking pretty good. We might just get a, just a medical clinic in here. And police. Um, police is okay, but we're probably starting to stretch thin uh, once again, so we will get that fixed. And we need some power for our uh, um, fire. Forgot how you, what you called them. They're called fire stations. Um, and we're probably just going to use these telegraph wires. Um, I think. Possibly. I did think I had some like rural power lines, but I guess I didn't. Um, we'll just make a quick connection here between our farming district 
and this area here. That should cover our power needs, perfect. And we're all covered for water as well, so that's good. Um, what are we gonna call this? We might call it, um, rather than Valley Hills, we'll call it Valley Side, because it is, I, I guess we are in a big valley here, and this is sort of on, on the side of it, right? I don't know. Um, and we'll just let that develop for a little bit. It'll help uh, take care of some of these workers that we're needing as well in the area. And while we're working on that, I might have a look at our traffic, which we've probably not looked at in a little while. So we're at 85%, so we're still doing quite well for a city that's pretty much had no um, real optimizations to traffic. But you can really see now um, that we do have some sort of key weaknesses here. Um, this sort of main drag in uh, Lorikeet Valley is causing some issues. <laughs> um, and I think potentially what we might need to do, let's have a look at our sort of our routes here. Where are people wanting to go? And they are, I mean, pretty much just going straight through. There's not a whole lot of turning happening. Um, but probably I would say here we're going to have a lot of turning action. Less than I thought, but it's still a reasonable amount. And going the other direction, yeah, a little bit as well. So I think what we will probably do, we're going to use some different roads. And we'll start at this intersection here. So let's have a look. What do we got? So we're going to have a look at our two unit three lane plus roads as my cat jumps on the desk in front of me and is now standing behind my monitor. And we've got a couple of options we can look at. I definitely have to move that cat though. I cannot see a thing. Okay, so. We've got our four lane roads, which uh, I believe will fit the footprint here. Yep. These will be sort of narrow, quite narrow lanes. Um, and there'll be no parking, which is not necessarily an issue for having sort of nodes of that sort of restricted parking area, but for, you know, considering this is uh, essentially the main drag with all this shopping and stuff, yeah, you probably don't want to have no parking the entire length. So we also have asymmetrical... Sorry, one plus two roads. And they do have parking spaces. So let's have a look and see what this looks like. And they have parking spaces on both sides, in fact. So I think we're going to make some changes to this intersection. Just to make it work a little bit better. So first of all, what I want to do is we're going to change up our lane connectors. So we're not, we are going to have no right turn going in this direction and we're going to have a dedicated left hand turning lane. And I'm pretty happy with the having right turn available here with no, and with left turn available as well. So I'm happy with that. Um, it's just that this right hand turn wasn't a popular movement anyway, but the left turn was, so it makes sense to have a dedicated turning lane there. Next, what we want to do is set up some automatic timed traffic lights, which will take advantage of our sort of lane connectors that we've set up. And then I think we'll probably move down the road and just set it up with the, those sort of dedicated turning lanes along the length of the, uh, of the road. And then for this last section, we don't need parking there. Let's upgrade it to a, a full sort of two lane road. 
and we can probably set it up to a two plus run one road here as well just sort of to spread the traffic out what it does mean however is that we are going to need to upgrade uh, our roundabout to a three lane roundabout as we want to uh, where possible to have um, one more lane on our roundabout than we do on our uh, uh, feeding roads okay and next up what do we need to do uh, we're going to switch this over to be a roundabout so it'll give us our dedicated turning lanes and the correct sort of uh, priority of the road as well so that's good and hopefully that works out well for us so valley sides looking all right we've got these ugly white houses that i thought i removed from my assets but didn't um so what we might do is let's go boomer and european suburbia and just european in fact um so hopefully that'll wipe out some of these uglier um, you know properties and we've got this big area that we had reserved for some parks so we are going to place some parks down of course so we're going to place a, a quite a large park down uh, we've got our assets that we've changed over maybe Yep. And I just want to use Mover just to center this. Yeah, it's pretty good. Okay, and what else can we stick in here? So probably we can get a playground in as well. And we're just going to shift that across as well. Alrighty, and I think we're just going to add just trees around this area um, and maybe just a few other fun props as well. gun there actually need something a bit smaller I think yeah that's much better Another thing we unlocked in our last episode that we hadn't had a chance to look at yet was crematoriums. Excellent. So our cemeteries are, I mean, fairly slowly filling up, but in fact, I think we've only got the one anyway. Yeah, so we probably need to look at getting some um, crematorium type uses in. And it probably makes sense for us to have a crematorium sort of near this lovely park. So I'm going to slot one in there and we'll just get a few sort of a bit around the place as well. Apparently they're all being built next to parks. Oh well, it's fine. So we've got three down. I think that's going to be fairly, that's a fairly good start at least. And um, that will allow us to handle hopefully any death waves or anything like that that might come our way a little bit later down the line. And our traffic is continuing to fall, as you can see here. So we're down to 78% now. Um, once again, while we do have some sort of busyness here, um, and we can probably actually turn off traffic lights there, to be honest, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. 
We've got a little bit of busyness on this roundabout, but it's it's just this corridor here where you've got people coming into Lorikeet Valley, um, uh, then sort of chucking uh, a right onto this four-lane road, and then using a bit of a rat run through the city streets to um, get to where they need to in the CBD. So we need to, I think, make some changes to sort of access in this area and we need to do it fairly quickly, I would suggest. Where are our routes here? Where are people going and where are they coming from? So we've got a, a lot using Birdsong Way here. Um, and yeah, quite a large number are coming from outside the area as well. So can we give them an easier way to get in? Do we need them to be running through old Lorikeet Valley here or can they get in a better way? I mean, I personally think that going via um, our highway through Belmont is actually a better, a better flow. So I don't know why they'd be using this trip here. But other thing we can do is sort of extend our motorway or our what is just a highway really at the moment. Um, and potentially sort of connecting up to um, Birdsong Way here. So let's have a look and see if we can do that. So obviously we don't own this tile yet. I think we have tiles that we can use. So I'm going to purchase this one and what we're going to do, we're going to just connect straight over the, um, the river here. And we're going to pretty much just come in here and connect probably maybe at this intersection here potentially we might maybe need to get rid of this this road here or make it a, a one way or something like that but I think it makes sense for us to join it up there and we are going to make it a larger road as well so this will be the second one of these four lane roads that we've built in the city so far I don't know why it's building as a bridge but uh, it is what it is. Let's just fi quickly fix that. And we're passing over the top of our rail line, which is actually really high up. I didn't think it was that high. <laughs> well, it's really far down, really, I suppose. And we're just going to, you know, just get on our way. across the uh, river here. No, I don't like that angle actually. All right, so. <laughs> no, oh, you've also not joined up at all actually. So let's try that one again. Okay, that's better. So how are we going to do this? Making this a four-way interchange is actually going to be a bit complicated. Um, you know, this probably wasn't designed to be done like that. So we might actually need to do a little bit of a sort of a junction here. We can probably join this directly up if we switch over to using uh, traffic lights. Let's remove these markings, sadly. And we have traffic lights anyway, so that's good. Um, we might also switch to this being a paved road as well. And yeah, that probably works all right. Okay, cool. 
and hopefully this will encourage people to come this way rather than going all the way through Lorikeet Valley. Uh, what we might do as well is add some dedicated turning lanes here as well. And auto time traffic lights as well. I think you need to be deleted. Okay, let's leave that for a bit, see how it works. Hopefully it doesn't break the game too much. But we're already starting to see a reasonable amount of uses actually for a road that we've just built. So hopefully this will help to alleviate some of the issues we were having with uh, um, with Birdsong Way here. Might give this road a, a name as well. Give it a special name. I'm gonna call this one a highway. It's, I guess it's a bit of a highway, but sort of, not really. I don't know. We give strange roads highway names in Australia anyway. So we're gonna call this uh, City Link. And just straighten that out a bit. Okay, so that is probably a um, nice uh, decision we've made building this uh, link road here. It is immediately being used. It's going to take a little while for um, us to notice the changes, obviously, in our sort of congestion here, but we'll come back to it in a little bit and see how it's going. Our valley side is building up quite well in fact it's full and we've still got full demand for residential so we probably do need to extend it a little bit more as well but we also have um, this sort of square here that we've probably now sort of opened up for development in itself as well so I think what we might do is get some road down here as well going to join up just before this bridge and why is this still happening do I have okay I don't know how long that's been off for but that probably makes sense really okay sorry my mistake okay so we've got this lovely rock structure here that we probably do want to preserve um, and we can probably make out a bit of a city park but we've still got a little bit of room on the periphery that we can use to um, to make some development happen and this is going to be a little bit of a cul-de-sac here I think we're probably too close to make another connection to Birdsong Way there So we've got some probably slightly unusual road structures here. Um, things aren't quite as square as they are sort of in, in this area here. But we have some opportunity to place down some park and some park assets here as well to help out the residents, which is always good and is always much appreciated. So we'll lay down some high density residential in this area. with a, a bit of high density, no we don't want it there, just sort of a budding out, a rail terminal or a rail station as well as um, a, sort of a node of commercial here as well. Next we definitely don't have water here, in fact we mostly covered for water which is surprising, um, but we'll just finish off covering it up there and we're going to I think I'll put down a park area, but we're not going to build anything on it as of yet. It's just going to be reserved for future preservation. So we can just remember it if uh, 
we go to develop something, we'll see that there's a, a park area sort of designated there. And we've also got a few blocks over here that we'll need to, to develop as well. So that hopefully should um, have us taken care of for at least a little bit longer. Now let's have a look at our traffic. 81%, so it is increasing again. Um, it looks like this movement here is probably still causing a little bit of congestion. Um, we could potentially look at having maybe some asymmetric um, roads or something like that. But I think I think it's okay. And look, in fact, it's in continuing to increase as well, or, or is sort of hovering a little higher anyway. So that's pretty good there. Um, I don't see any reason why we should make any changes to that at this time. Well, I think we've made some good progress this week in expanding the city and trying to tackle some of that residential demand, although looking at our RCI indicators, we've still got a lot of growing to go before we can completely look after that. With that being said, I think that's about it for this episode. It's been a um, quite productive one. We've put in a whole new suburb over if we pop over to Valleyside um, with a nice little park and some amenities. And it's also sort of unlocked this um, other side of our train station with the, uh, the freight dive that we've put in here as well. So I think that's pretty good. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, please make sure you give it a like, subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell so you get a ding to your device the next time I post a video. I also want to give a massive shout out to my Buy Me A Coffee supporters. Their names are in the lower third right now. Other than that, you can find my social media links in the description as well as the Discord server. So if you want to engage in the conversation, hop on there and I'm happy to have a chat about anything you want to chat about. But until next time, my name is Bob Dendry. This is City Skylines. Thanks for joining us at Lorikeet Valley this week. And until next time, goodbye.